Hey guys, welcome to another installment of Color Mixing with Chris. We're here in the booth at Createx and uh, we're going to tackle a color. We had a request. Uh, a guy, a gentleman is uh, building guitars and he has to match or try to match a color from Fender uh, and that's Fire Mist Gold. So it's similar. I hope it's similar to this. this we, we did a little bit of research. We only had uh, images kind of online and stuff that we were able to find in, in a color library and a couple different uh, guitar uh, picture images. Uh, but this was the request. So uh, I, I kind of tackled it this morning and really thought that I was going to nail this color and I had an idea of where I was going to go uh, and, and I was using kind of some of our metallic colors and I was actually using some of our wicked detail colors to kind of tint and adjust the color and I actually got really close. Uh, the problem with that was it was kind of off the mark in terms of uh, repeatability and consistency. And if you guys have watched other videos, I talked about whether it's candy or whether it's just mixing colors or custom colors. I try to keep it within the confines of repeatability. So rather than having a large amount or a small amount like we have here and having to like when you write down in your color library, if you're going to keep this color, oh, I want two drops of this color, or it was a drop of this, or something. I, I'm not a big fan of that. So, trying to figure out a ratio that's going to be consistent uh, in terms of like four to one, six to one, five to one, or something like that, parts wise, you know, it's always going to be the same, whether it's an ounce, or a quart, or a pint, or even a gallon, right? So, it's always going to be kind of the same in terms of that level playing field. So I really thought I was going to be able to do it with, with just one or two metallics and some of our wicked detail colors because we have more of that artist palette of colors in terms of the, the ochres and the sepias and uh, the umbers, burnt umber, raw umber, that's what I thought. Uh, and it didn't work out that way. As much as I was against kind of getting a bunch of different metallic colors and kind of mixing them all together, that's what ended up working. That's what this color is. This is actually a blend, and I'll give you the ratio right now, it was four parts of our metallic rose to two parts of our metallic gold to one part of our metallic light brown. And uh, again, as much as I was kind of against trying to mix all these different metallics, that's what worked. And, and it's repeatable. It's, it's going to be way more consistent. Uh, originally, we we're kind of thinking about doing something with candies, maybe tinting with candies. But the problem with that is if you guys are familiar with candies, they are extremely unforgiving. And you're going to run the risk of, of if you have to do a repair, or if there's something while you're painting, like again, this guy's doing a guitar, let's say there's a nick or something falls on it or while he's painting it or there's dust and he needs to sand it out, you know you, if you're spraying with candy, you can't do that. You can't sand it and kind of recoat. It's going to bullseye or, or you know, show where that repair was, where a color like this, that's all metallics and pigment, you're going to be able to do a spot repair. You're going to be able to maybe, ah, oh, one more coat and it's going to look okay. You're not going to have to be super concerned with um, the overlaps or getting into paint areas a little around that neck pocket area that you might not be able to get so even with candy. So I have right here, I have a couple samples. This is kind of where I was and what we came into. And we always talk about test panels and doing test panels. And these are exactly why I was kind of able to let down panel, if you will, in terms of lighter, darker, adding, tinting, shading, kind of seeing where I started and where I ended. And this is pretty much right here where I finished. And, and that's actually exactly, this color is exactly what's on here. So, I have that right here. Again, four to two to one. Something real simple. Four parts, two parts, one part. And I added a little bit of our 4050, our UVLS clear 4050. Uh, and when I spray metallics, especially something like this, I, I like to be right around 25% of the addition of 4050 and then I'm right around 10% reduction of 4011 and, and I kind of want to give this because this is a question we had actually from the last video we talked about viscosity and uh, we had a, a, an individual ask us to see the viscosity rather than just talking about the numbers percentages this is kind of what I want it to look like I want it to flow off the stick to the point where once there's nothing on there it's got a couple little drips it doesn't drip right away and it's not to the point where it's got like a lagging tail so this is really the viscosity that you want it to be. So what I did was I did four coats. This is four coats over just a gray sealer. This is what it looked like before I started. It was right here, gray, nice neutral. This is our Autoborn sealer gray. And that's the finished product. So what I'm gonna do is actually, when we break away, we have a new product. This is our 4053 high gloss. This is a very shiny high gloss uh, top coat. So I'm gonna go ahead and put two or three coats 
of our 4053 over this, and uh, we'll see what that looks like when we come back. Hey guys, welcome back. While we were away, like I mentioned, I put two coats, two coats, just two coats is good with the 4053 High Gloss Clear, that new product that we have, and you can see it is very shiny. So that's it right there. That's the finished product. And uh, you can see it's a pretty cool color. It's definitely nothing like what we have in our line uh, in terms of like the color shift. It's got a little bit of a red rosy kind of side cast on there. Um, and it is, it's a very cool color. This is a vintage color. I believe, I think it was like the 50s, 60s era uh, from Fender. And this is our take on Fire Mist Gold. So for Color Mixing with Chris, I'm Chris Arpin. Thanks for checking us out and we'll see you guys next time.